Megan from The Garden. So it is mid-June here in Northwest Iowa, so I thought this would be the perfect time to film my very first vegetable garden tour of the year. Now, if you are new to my channel, I garden in Zone 5A, and this is an urban garden space that is right next door to my photography studio downtown. And half of the garden is dedicated to my cut flowers, and the other half of the garden is dedicated to the vegetables that I grow for my family. Now, when I purchased my building a few years ago, I bought this empty lot next door. It was completely full of weeds. Um, so we took care of all the weeds, fenced it in, and I created this garden space. I have everything planted for the year. Everything is growing amazing so far. So I want to show you this garden. Then I also want to show you my pumpkin patch that I have. And then towards the end of the video, I will give you a peek of our raised garden bed that we have at home in our backyard. So this is the central area of the vegetable garden and the first thing that you'll probably notice is this trellis that is right above my head. So this is new to me this year. This is the Titan Squash Tunnel. I purchased it last fall from Gardener Supply and that is exactly what I am growing on it, squash. So I have planted two different kinds. I have butternut squash planted on this side and that is planted right in the middle of the trellis. I have uh, two plants and once they start putting on some growth growth they'll vine up and completely cover the middle of the trellis and then on this side I have spaghetti squash planted and that is planted at this corner and the opposite corner and those will fill up the outside of the trellis. Now this trellis is specifically made for squash growing so it is really heavy duty and it will be able to support those fruits. Um, I am trellising squash this year because last year um, my squash and pumpkins completely overtook my garden. I ended up with a really bad case of powdery mildew and so this year I am doing everything different to make sure that that does not happen. So then on this side of the squash trellis, I have a few different things. Right in front of me is my row of cauliflower and broccoli. The plants are alternating. And then at the very end of the row, I have one Brussels sprout plant. And as you can see, I have tiny little Brussels sprouts starting to grow. Now right next to my broccoli and cauliflower row are all of my seed potatoes that I planted. And now I did a video on this earlier this spring, but I have three kinds of potatoes planted in this row. I have a German butterball, a French fingerling, and a Yukon gold, which is my favorite and a really popular potato in our area. The other area that I have potatoes planted are in my grow bags. I have never grown potatoes in grow bags this year, so I'm doing that just as an experiment this year to compare how they grow to in ground. They're coming up, but definitely not as strong as the ones in ground. And then you'll notice the TP that is right in between the broccoli, cauliflower, and potatoes. I have a few Kentucky Wonder pole beans planted here. And these should easily vine up the bamboo stakes and then I just have these fastened at the top with a zip tie. Okay, let me show you the other side of the trellis. So on the other side of this trellis, which is the west end of the garden, I have a lot of tomatoes planted. Most of the tomatoes that I have planted in this garden are our canning tomatoes. So we have Roma um, and then some Amish paste tomatoes. I do have a random Cherokee purple tomato plant in here and then one sunrise bumblebee tomato plant, which is a little cherry tomato that is a yellow and orange striped. Um, that's a new one for me this year, so I'm excited to see how that grows. Uh, but the tomato Tomatoes are all growing really well. Um, I think I have about 11 or 12, which is the amount that we grew last year and was the perfect amount for the sauce that we needed. And then in between some of the tomatoes, I have some random seed potatoes that I apparently didn't get out of the ground from last year. So I just let those grow to see what we can get. In here again is my butternut squash that will grow up the trellis. And then just past this one tomato plant, I have two rows of some bush beans planted. And these are a red swan bean. Um, I picked this up online from Baker Creek. Now these two Roma tomato plants are the ones that are putting on my first tomatoes of the season. 
I think they each have about three tomatoes on them, um, but they're looking great so far. Now, last week I did go in and do a pretty thorough pruning of all of my tomatoes. I cut the bottom stems off because you don't want any of your branches from the tomato plants touching the ground because that can give disease to the tomato plant. And then I also went through and pruned out all of the suckers so that I just had main branches growing. And then just on the other side of the tomato plants are all of my sweet corn rows. Now I plant an ambrosia sweet corn. It is a super sweet um, white and yellow sweet corn. It's the same one that we plant every year. I have really great luck in my area with it. And what do they say knee high by the 4th of July? Well, it's mid-June and my sweet corn is already knee high, so I think it's doing pretty good. Okay, so I'm standing in the north pathway of the garden now, and you'll notice this trellis that is going over me. This is another attempt of mine to vertical garden this year. Um, I'm actually gardening in a little bit less of space for vegetables this year just because I added so many more cut flowers into my area, but I'm getting way more plants because I am gardening vertically. Um, I did a video on this a few weeks ago where I show all the ways that I'm vertical gardening, so make sure to check that out. Um, but this this trellis I just purchased on Amazon. I think it was about 30 bucks. Um, on this side, I have planted the Rich Sweetness 132 melon. Um, that is also from Baker Creek. It's a little mini melon, um, similar to a cantaloupe, I think. And then on this side at the base, I have some cucamelons planted that I got from a friend. And so I think once these both start getting a little bit of height on the plants, I'm going to have to put some twine on the trellis, but they should both grow up the sides nicely and completely fill in this arch. Now I'm also utilizing one of these arches in my other pathway, so let me show you that. All right, so this is the south pathway of the garden, and now I do not have the second trellis up yet, but that will go right in this spot. Now on this side, I have a cucumber planted. And that is an English Telegraph cucumber. And then on this opposite side, I have some red noodle beans planted. And both of those should definitely easily grow over the trellis whenever I get that placed in there. Um, probably this week. It's on my list. Now that cucumber in reference is right next to my Brussels sprout plant. And then in this other area of this part of the garden, I have four more tomato plants. And then I have one zucchini plant planted. And as you can see behind me, I have my greenhouse. That has been such a great addition to the garden this year. I don't currently have anything inside of it right now, but later this summer I may use it to start some fall crops. And then I think over the winter, I may try to start some early seedlings of lettuce or maybe even try to grow some lettuce over the winter. Who knows? I think it'll be really fun to experiment with. So then the last two beds in this garden that I wanna show you are my raspberry bed and my strawberry bed. Okay, so here's my little raspberry bed. Now this started out with just one raspberry plant last year. I added one more plant this year. You can definitely tell which was last year's and which was this year's because last year's is growing like crazy. And then I do have one small blueberry bush next to it. Although it's not doing very well, I'm wondering if it's my soil levels um, if the acidity isn't quite right. I may see how it does this year, but then I think next year I'll just make this an entire raspberry patch. And then these two raised beds are where my strawberries were. Last fall, my uncle gave me about 100 strawberry roots. Half of them went at home in our garden and the other half went to these two beds. Unfortunately, over the winter, something got in and dug most of them up. I do still have a few left and they're actually starting to put out new plants. So my plan is to let them grow and expand this year, build some covers for the bed, just like we did for our one at home, and I should have a really great crop of strawberries next year. Okay, let me show you my pumpkin patch. Okay, so here's a look at my pumpkin patch. It may not look by much, but this is a really great place to grow pumpkins. So this spring, my husband and I made this no-dig raised bed out of railroad ties, and we filled it with a mixture of topsoil and compost. This is right up next to the neighboring building behind my building. It gets really hot during the day, which is the perfect environment for growing any vine crop. It's 40 feet long and about four feet deep. So in this space, I have a pretty good variety of pumpkins. Starting here is a mini harvest blend. These will trellis up this little metal cylinder that I made. Then I have the Minnesota Midget Melon, 
which is a type of cantaloupe. I have a sugar baby bush watermelon, a Connecticut field pumpkin, the jack-o'-lantern pumpkin, the Jardale pumpkin. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but these are a really pretty sage green colored pumpkin. The Casparita pumpkin, which is a white color, porcelain doll, Cherokee bush pumpkin, candy corn pumpkin, and lastly, these are two vines for a type of gourd. It's a green and white striped gourd. These are some seeds that I got from my uncle last fall. Okay, so the last thing I want to show you on this garden tour is our raised bed garden at home. Okay, so here's just a small peek at our raised vegetable garden bed at home. It's about 10 by 20 in size. We built this a few years ago. A lot of what we have in here right now is tomatoes and peppers. And I'll get to that in a second. I'll show you all the different varieties that we have. But towards the end, in this corner, you'll see this uh, chicken wire structure. This is my strawberry patch. And so this cover is to help keep all of the animals out of my strawberries, which I learned the hard way. Next to that, we have a few cucumbers planted, which we still need to get the trellis up for. I have some chamomile, some kale, and some lettuce in here. We also have a few cabbages and a whole lot of garlic. This is our first year growing garlic, so I'm really excited to see how this turns out. And then in between the garlic rows, I planted some radish, which probably need to come out of the ground. In the very middle of the bed, which is kind of the hard to reach area, I have a zucchini planted. And then on this tall black obelisk, I have some more Kentucky Wonder pole beans. So then as far as our peppers and tomatoes go, we are growing a really big variety of both this year. We started everything from seed. Most of our seeds came from Baker Creek. So for tomatoes, we're growing the accordion, Brad's Atomic Grape, Sunrise Bumblebee, Cherokee Purple, Kellogg's Breakfast, the Pineapple Tomato, Tappy's Heritage, the Yellow Pear Tomato, and then of course our Romas and our Amish Paste for canning. I also have a few Orange Hat Tomatoes which are a micro tomato. And for peppers, we have a big variety of peppers too. Some are more mild and some are hot. My husband is really into fermenting and pickling and making his own hot sauce. And so we're trying a lot of new varieties this year. We have the cayenne, fish, the grande jalapeno, habanada, Jedi, the tom jalapeno, poblano, puma, shishito, sugar rush, a yellow petite bell, and a green bell pepper. Okay, so that's it for this garden tour video. Please feel free to subscribe to my channel. I have a lot of content coming up, including an update to my cut flower garden bed, the cottage garden that I'm building, and soon I will be harvesting cut flowers to start those market bouquets. So stay tuned, we'll see you soon.